Hello and welcome to our talk. I'm Neil from the University of Toronto. Our paper is called Spooky, Granulating LSM3 Compactions Correctly. And this is joint work with Tamara, Shmuel, Michael, Eddie, and Moshe from Viops. Our paper deals with a data structure called the Log Structured Merge Tree, or LSM tree for short. LSM tree became widely adopted in 2005 by the Google Big Table system, and today it's used across a wide number of storage engines and key value stores in industry. It has many applications, including online transaction processing, analytics, time series, and graph databases. LSM tree's foremost goal is to be able to ingest large amounts of data into storage quickly and efficiently. More specifically, LSM tree is designed to remedy a problem in existing data structures for storage, such as B-trees and hash tables. The problem with these structures is that they map every data entry to a particular location in storage and write it in place. This leads to small random writes to storage, an access pattern that degrades performance and lifetime. Instead, LSM tree buffers new application data in memory. It then sort merges the buffer with data in storage in what is known as merge or compaction operations. By so doing, LSM tree transforms all writes to storage into being large and sequential, which is a much more efficient access pattern. A downside is that LSM tree's merge operations also cause each entry to be rewritten to storage multiple times. This phenomenon is known as write amplification, and if it gets too high, it can offset the benefits of using LSM tree in the first place. In this paper, we identify the following problem. As the data size stored in existing LSM tree designs grows and comes to utilize more of the storage device's capacity, write amplification increases at an accelerating rate. This violates our expectation about the behavior of LSM tree, whose write amplification is thought to increase at a logarithmic rate with respect to data size. So in this talk, we're going to get to the root of this problem and offer a solution. But first, let's examine how LSM tree works in detail. LSM tree consists of a buffer in memory that ingests all inserts and updates of key value entries made by the application. In storage, there are conceptual levels of exponentially increasing capacities. When the buffer fills up, we sort its entries by key and flush the result as a sorted array called a run into level one. Whenever one of the levels fills up to capacity, we merge either, or s either some or all of its contents into the next larger level. In order to search for a data entry with a given key, we search the levels from smallest to largest. As soon as we find an entry with a matching key, the search terminates. To facilitate the performance of reads, there are fence pointers in memory. These contain the first key of every storage block of every run, so they allow us to reach the relevant key range in each run with just one storage access. And in addition, there's a bloom filter in memory for each run. These allow us to uh, skip accessing runs that do not contain the relevant key for our point queries. Now, a critical design aspect of any LSM tree is its compaction policy. This determines which components to merge under which circumstances. And there are multiple design dimensions to a compaction policy. One such important dimension is uh, compaction eagerness, meaning how eagerly or lazily we perform compaction operations. This dimension controls the trade-off between the speed of reads and writes. The most famous policies along this dimension are leveling, which is more eager, and tiering, which is more lazy. For ease of exposition, we will assume the leveling merge policy, uh, where there is just one sorted run per level, though the paper actually generalizes to both policies. In this work, we rather focus on an orthogonal and overlooked design dimension, namely compaction granularity. This refers to how much to compact at a time. Today, all LSM tree designs in the wild can be classified into one of two categories with respect to how they granulate compaction, full merge versus partial merge. For instance, full merge is used by default in HBase and Cassandra, while partial merge is used by default in RocksDB and LevelDB. With full merge, we compact full consecutive levels all at once into the next largest non-full level. The problem with this approach is that during a merge operation into the largest level, we need double as much physical space as the size of the live data to execute the merge. The reason for this is multi-version concurrency control. We cannot delete the original files until the merge operation is finished. We refer to this phenomenon as transient space amplification. It is called transient because it only lasts for the duration of one merge operation. Let us now examine the alternative, partial merge. With partial merge, we split each level into multiple files known as sorted string tables, or SSTs. The data is still sorted across all SSTs within each level. When a level is full, we pick the file that intersects with as little data as possible at the next larger level and compact it there. This requires less space than with full merge since we compact smaller units of data at a time. However, partial merge has its own set of problems. First, for each file being merged from a smaller level into a larger one, 
there are some non-intersecting entries, as shown in red, in the edge intersecting files at the larger level. On average, one extra file's worth of data is superfluously included in each compaction operation. This increases write amplification. The second problem with partial merge is that it typically executes many small compactions simultaneously, and that the resulting files have very different lifespans. In particular, files at larger levels tend to live exponentially longer before they are compacted and deleted. The issue here is that modern SSDs write data internally in a log-structured manner. This means that if the LS entry writes multiple files simultaneously, these files become physically interspersed within the SSD. Eventually, the SSD needs to clear space for more data. It does this by performing garbage collection. But since the LS entry's files are interspersed and have very different lifetimes, there are generally no areas in the SSD that contain little live data. And so each SSD garbage collection operation has to copy a lot of data in the background. This can further significantly increase write amplification. So overall, we have two approaches, each, each problematic in its own way. Full merge exhibits high space amplification, while partial merge exhibits very high write amplification. We summarize the problem in the following figure. It shows us that no existing granulation approach is able to achieve high storage utilization and moderate write amplification at the same time. To this end, we introduce Spooky. Spooky stands for Partition Compaction for Key Value Stores. The core insight is that there is an asymmetry in how transient space amplification and write amplification are derived from across different levels of the LS entry. Space amplification is potentially highest when merging into the largest level. On the other hand, write amplification is derived equally from all levels. The reason is that for every entry we merge into a new level, there are on average R pre-existing entries at that level that must be rewritten in the resulting compaction, where R is the LS entry size ratio. Hence, the size ratio is what determines the contribution of each level to write amplification, and this ratio is the same between any pairs of levels. Therefore, we can apply full merge for all but the largest level to optimize for writes. Since these levels are smaller, we don't incur very drastic transient space amplification when merging across them. And on the other hand, we can apply a design more like partial merge at just the largest level to restrict, restrict space amplification at only a minor cost to write amplification. Specifically, in Spooky, we partition the LS entry's largest level into equally sized files while maintaining a sorted order across these files. Then, whenever a full merge operation into the second largest level takes place, we partition the output based on the file boundaries at the largest level. And so we end up with perfectly overlapping pairs of files at the largest two levels. This means that the files at the second largest level may actually have different sizes, depending on how many new writes are coming to each key partition. Now, when the second largest level is full, and we need to spill some data into the largest level, we compact one pair of perfectly overlapping files at a time. One shortcoming so far is that performing a full merge operation into the second largest level still involves significant transient space amplification. The additional space needed is equivalent to the capacity at this level, which is n over r, where n is the data size and r is the fanout. To further restrict transient space amplification, we can perform the partitioning at even smaller levels. Doing so at the third largest level, for example, restricts transient space amplification to n over r squared, since this is a capacity at the third largest level. This is usually good enough. It's generally not desirable to start partitioning at even smaller levels, as this can cause the number of open files in the system to increase and exceed the bounds allowed by the operating system. So now if the third largest level is full, while the second largest level isn't, we perform a partition merge into the second largest level, one pair of files at a time. Or if both the third and second largest levels are full, we perform a partition merge operation into the largest level, one triplet of perfectly overlapping files at a time. Now, it could be that some resulting file is too large, such that compacting it next time would exceed our expected maximum transient space amplification. If so, we split this file in the first place so that future compactions would be smaller. On the other hand, suppose two adjacent files become relatively small compared to other partitions. In this case, we can unify these partitions into a single one during the next merge to avoid having too many small files in the system. So now let us compare Spooky to full and partial merge. With respect to space amplification, Spooky drastically improves on full merge because it performs smaller compactions at the largest level. Indeed, in the following experiment, Spooky exhibits far less space fluctuations than with full merge. This allows it to store double as much data as with full merge and to match partial merge in terms of storage capacity. 
Let us now discuss compaction overheads. In this respect, Spooky improves on partial merge by always compacting files that perfectly overlap in their key ranges. This leads to less superfluous work in each compaction operation. In the following figure, Spooky has slightly higher compaction overheads than full merge because it contains larger data uh, and because there is a modest partitioning overhead at the third largest level. Nevertheless, uh, Spooky is able to improve in partial merge by performing significantly less redundant compaction work. Let us now discuss garbage collection overheads. First, full merge and Spooky perform fewer simultaneous compactions than with partial merge. This leads to fewer files with different lifespans becoming interspersed within the SSD. At the same time, full merge and Spooky write larger files than with partial merge. Therefore, when a file dies, more contiguous space becomes free all at once, thus making it easier for the SSD to perform efficient internal garbage collection. In the following experiment, we benchmark the underlying SSD's write amplification using the Linux NVMe command. We see that Spooky achieves slightly higher garbage collection write amplification than full merge, primarily because its data size is twice as large. At the same time, Spooky significantly improves in partial merge by writing larger though fewer files simultaneously. The significance of these garbage collection overheads is that they multiply the LSM tree's compaction overheads to give the total write amplification. And so ultimately, Spooky achieves a two to three times reduction in write amplification compared to partial merge, while at the same time being able to store twice as much user data as with full merge. While the experiment so far had a uniform access pattern, we see on the left-hand side here that they also hold under a Ziphian workload distribution. So overall, Spooky is the first LSM tree compaction granulation approach that achieves high storage utilization and moderate total write amplification at the same time. And the reduction in write amplification translates to a significant performance gains for the application. On the left-hand side here, Spooky achieves at least twice the write throughput of partial merge under uniform workload. For mixed workloads that also involve point reads and range reads, Spooky improves throughput still as there is less background write amplification to get in the way of the queries. Now in the paper, there are various other design aspects we explore. We show how to generalize Spooky across any compaction policy, from very eager ones to very lazy ones. We integrate Spooky with a technique known as dynamic capacity adaptation to also restrict space amplification resulting from the existence of obsolete entries in the tree. We show how to perform trivial moves by simply moving rather than merging non-overlapping files across levels. And we provide cost models to allow reasoning about the different designs analytically. So in conclusion, we introduce Spooky, a new method of granulating LSM tree compactions that achieves a better balance between write amplification and space amplification than was ever previously possible. And Spooky is actually just the latest in a series of six recent papers, each of which improves some aspect of LSM trees, from its um, filter policy to its compaction policy. And we encourage you to have a look at them. So that's it for now. Thanks very much for your attention.